1791, Canada was divided into two provinces, Upper and Lower Canada, today Ontario and Quebec. John Graves Simcoe, a distinguished British cavalry officer, was appointed Upper Canada's first Lieutenant Governor. When he arrived in 1792, he chose Niagara as the first capital of Upper Canada. He brought with him his wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth brought culture and civility to the frontier. Her diary describes dinners with the officers, dances, concerts, and staged plays arranged specially for the locals. She also left a legacy of invaluable watercolors, depicting life at York and Niagara. Meanwhile, her husband believed in economic progress for the province, and Governor Simcoe set about doing that with all his ambitious enthusiasm. He was determined to bring order to civic government, support the settlers, encourage road building, and sent requests to England to increase funding for schools as well as the Church of England. He requested an annual disbursement of £20,000. He was refused. Previous conflicts had left the British coffers drained. But Simcoe was persistently energetic. Under Simcoe, the Constitutional Act of 1791 was introduced to the Canadas to bring full British law and order, something the British government believed had been lacking in the American colonies. It established uniform rules of law, justice, licensing, and even measurements. But perhaps Simcoe's most controversial achievement was to pass legislation that would eventually lead to the abolition of slavery. Simcoe knew it would take a generation to achieve his goal of complete abolition, but he started the process. Enslaved persons were not automatically free, but in time their children would be, and no more slaves would be imported into Upper Canada. Simcoe met resistance at all levels, but he also received much support, and sometimes from surprising places. With the help of Robert Hamilton of Niagara and Richard Cartwright of Kingston, both slave owners, the Act to Prevent the Further Introduction of Slaves was passed on July 9th, 1793, the first of its kind in the British Empire. And it set the stage for the success of the Underground Railroad and the more than 30,000 black refugees who found freedom here in Canada. The military defence of the province continued to bother Simcoe. He believed the naval forces were weak. And while he believed Americans would soon become disillusioned with independence, he wanted a force in British North America substantial enough to defend both Upper and Lower Canada. Simcoe also wanted to move Upper Canada's capital inland, away from the United States border, a mere river away. York, now the city of Toronto, was named the new capital of the province. But Simcoe's request for additional troops to guard Upper Canada was largely dismissed. Only a small garrison was maintained at Fort George in Niagara. In 1796, Governor Simcoe became sick with neuralgia and gout. Elizabeth and John Simcoe returned to Great Britain. However, the town of Niagara would remain culturally and strategically important. And as the new century began, Simcoe's concerns about another American campaign became very real. <laughs> 